Making a hotbed, it's a lot of work. Why bother? Well, this is a question I've often asked myself and this is one attempt to answer it. So we've assembled some materials, uh, not too many. The, the, the only new bits actually were these corner posts, which I bought from the builder's yard and we can reuse several times again. And then some old pallets, some cardboard to line the pallets, which helps to keep the warmth in. And what we're doing is uh, assembling horse manure, which means poo and bedding in this case. And we're using that because it's the most available source locally of heat generating material. And the neighbor has a lot of horses. They bed them on straw, mostly. We were unlucky in this case because it turned out some of the bedding we had to use because it was all that was available had some wood shavings. And what we're doing is making an enclosure to hold it all in place. And then that heat will be confined. And the tricky bit is um, it, with an outdoor hotbed, stopping the heat um, blowing away before uh, it's been used by whatever purpose, in this case, the carrots that I'm going to sow. Normally I make a hotbed in the greenhouse and that's a contained space, so that's a very efficient way actually of, of doing all this. Uh, this was partly a trial to see how it would look outside or how it would work outside. I've done it before and it hasn't always been brilliant. I thought I could improve on it. Well, we'll see. When it when you do a hotbed inside, say for germinating seeds, that, that works really well because the the heat is all there and before it can escape or be blown away, which it doesn't really happen in the greenhouse, then we've got thousands of seeds on there and those seeds are germinating in module trays and uh, that that way you can use that precious heat to for, for massive effect, for, for getting lots of crops going. Whereas here what we were doing was um, just just raising one one vegetable in this space and using quite a lot of material for it. So I go and get the horse manure with car trailer. It's only a couple of hundred meters up the road, but it's a very efficient way of um, doing it, fetching it with the trailer and then tipping it out with wheelbarrows. We were doing this in really cold weather. It was uh, 27th of February. And funnily enough, that it was pro probably the coldest day of the year actually although it's sunny there was a really cold wind and it started to snow even as we were um, assembling all these ingredients to make the hotbed that doesn't matter because the the heat is just generated there and in a very small area and we had a way of um, keeping the heat in a bit as you'll see we are adding water because Making it, um, or once this heat starts to generate, the it loses a lot of moisture and steam. And so it's important when you make a hotbed to make sure that the ingredients are fully moist. You can't really overdo the water at this stage because it, it, a, a heat like this is, is very free draining. And, and if you put on too much, it'll just drain away at the bottom. But you do want your materials to be fully moist. And the cardboard again helps with this as well as keeping the heat in, the cardboard keeps the moisture in. So moisture and warmth, the key ingredients for making great compost, which is basically what we're doing. We're making a, a, a large compost heap all in a very short space of time, like less than a day. And once we've got all the horse manure ingredients there, we're going to put some compost on top to grow a crop in, in this case. If this was just for germinating seeds, to make heat for germinating seeds, you wouldn't need the final layer of compost on top. We're trampling it down because that um, makes sure that the we've got a really full heap. You, you know, we need a lot of raw material here. The size of this heap, uh, 1.2 meters square, that's roughly four feet square, is I would say pretty much a minimum for a hotbed of this kind. Uh, if you had a smaller one, it would still get hot, but it won't hold the heat for so long. This this heap held a good level of heat for uh, roughly five weeks and any less than that you know you're going to run out of warmth before it's had 
enough effect on whatever you're trying to do, your crop you're growing. So here we're tipping some of my homemade compost, homemaker's compost, uh, which is between six and ten months old, I reckon. And that's um, the medium in which the carrots, in this case, are going to grow. If you had more compost than I had, that wouldn't have hurt, actually. It, this was about a six inch or 15 centimetre amount on top of the horse manure. It's pretty much a minimum, I'd say. Again, I'm treading it down because you can't compact compost. You know, compost is so full of air and um, structure. It's not like soil. So, and you want it to be firm, even for something like carrots. This, this, you'll see this works fine. And it, again, it means that it, the roots have something firm to go into. They're not sort of jostling around in, in, in fluffy air. All roots like firm conditions to grow in. So there we are already now to grow. We have compost pre-worn from the bottom. Let's see what happens. It's now six days since we created this hotbed and already it's sunk quite a bit. We've had fantastic weather since then in terms of, wow, snow. Um, this was all white. The heat hadn't got going, but now the heat is going. After six days, you see this thermometer probe is 30 centimetre a foot long, and the temperature is reading a good 50 centigrade. That's around 135 Fahrenheit, I think. So there's plenty of warmth here, and I can feel actually the surface of the compost is pleasantly warm. So I'm going to sow some carrots. And the compost on here is starting to break up a bit. We, we put on this slightly lumpy homemade compost and the, the quality, I think in many people's eyes for sowing carrots, is a little bit lumpy. I think it'll be all right though. In my experience, um, these kinds of things are okay to do. I'm taking out these boards because they're not needed anymore and you will be able to see what's going on. Actually, this one I do need because it's in deeper. So we have a, a navel base here <coughs> and it's very interruptive to making videos with sound as you might have noticed. However, the work can continue. So what I'm doing is just levelling off the surface of this compost, pulling out any plastic and getting it even more than anything. For, for sowing fine seeds, small seeds like these carrots, um, more than anything you want it level so that when you draw out a drill, the, um, you haven't got uneven depth. They want to go in at a certain depth, that will keep the seeds moist, that's why one makes a little drill to put the seeds into, but they also don't want to be too deep because then these tiny little seeds are going to struggle to push up their first little stem and leaves to the surface. So having it level and not super fine, this is where there's a bit of misunderstanding about how the surface needs to be for sowing and it is often thought especially by anyone who's done any tilling that it's kind of got to be pulverized soft and crumbly what what actually happens if it's too soft the the um little particles that have been mechanically created and broken basically by a machine when it rains they squash together again that's called capping and that results in even sometimes a surface warming which can stop little seedlings coming up. So the slightly larger lamps that I've got here before I sow are good for that because they actually help to get the surface open. And yeah, there may be one or two seeds that get buried under a lamp, but they won't be many. Now I'm just wondering which way to draw my drills. I think I'll do it that way. This, we put cardboard in this compost and that's what I'm picking up, these rather annoying, lumpy, shiny bits. 
So carrots, the reason I'm sowing carrots here and not say planting lettuce or cabbages is because carrots are difficult to start in the greenhouse in module trays. It can be done, but you often lose the taproot in the transplanting process and you end up with a fork carrot. So these little seeds here will benefit from the warmth of the hotbed. Meanwhile, we have just been sowing in module trays and seed trays in the greenhouse over another hotbed, which is in the greenhouse itself. Pretty much all the other vegetables that we're going to grow here through the spring, such as lettuce, cabbage, kohlrabi, onions, spring onions, spinach, coriander, dill, and all of those are germinating in their modules or seed trays, but we haven't yet sown any carrots, and this hotbed is giving the opportunity to do that and to, I hope, you never know for sure in gardening, but the plan is, the hope is to have an early crop of carrots sometime in May, which for outdoor carrots is a lot earlier than you would expect if you didn't have underground heating, so to speak. So, I've now got one, two, three, four, five, six rows, potentially, of carrots, and the it's a sort of ridge and hollow. I'm sowing early nons, which is, for me, the best seed, the main seed. It's an easy seed, it's not expensive, it's reliable, and the flavour's good. It's a fast grower, so it's suitable for spring sowing. And I'm using biodynamic seed actually, because I have found this company in Germany, Bingenheim, they, their seeds, they just want to grow. They have a certain vigor about them. And last year we noticed the Bingenheim carrots came up more strongly than anything else we sowed. Right, now I'm just gonna need to climb on here to reach that side. I'm staying this side, because I just want to, then you can see more clearly, I'm thinking. I'm sowing these a little bit thicker than I would normally recommend, because it, this is quite a precious resource I'm using here, this hotbed. It's taken a lot of time and effort, materials to create it. So I want to make sure that it's going to grow a lot of food. And if these carrots all germinate successfully, then we simply thin them. Whereas if they don't, you know, we've, we've wasted our time a bit. So hence sowing thicker. And the beauty of carrots, if you have sown too thickly, you know, don't panic. Um, pull out the larger ones after six to eight weeks when they're all coming up and looking strong. Um, if you just go through and pull out the larger ones, you will have little baby carrots to eat very early. They won't be like a big plateful, but really, really worthwhile at a time of year when every little taste of carrot is so precious. So that's four rows done. Just need to do the last two, a few more seed. Then all I'm gonna do is rake over. There's one more thing to consider though, which is, do I cover this, say with a cloche or with fleece? And my feeling is that we probably shall. Depends a bit on the weather. So two days ago, three days ago now, the temperature went climb back above freezing. It was very frosty before. So spring is beginning. But the thing with spring is you never know <laughs> how long it's going to last before it's cold again. So we might leave it uncovered for a day or two, just watch the weather forecast and make a decision then. But if I do cover it, I'm thinking just to put fleece over, which is so easy to use. It's not like making a cloche. Although we could do that as well. You know, there's many options there. So here, I'm simply just raking it up very lightly, just to cover those seeds. I'm not anticipating anything will eat them. I very much doubt slugs is, <laughs> slugs is the main hazard for sowings of little baby carrots. And slugs love the carrot seedlings when they're very tiny. However, I'd be very surprised if any slugs can put up with this heat here. What I am going to do though now, just to finish off, is just level it off a bit like that. 
this will just help to keep moisture and should it not rain although I think it probably will rain and it just does break up any of the bigger lumps and this is it basically now apart from covering if we do it if we do cover we'll show you um, I'm not anticipating many weed seeds because this is homemade compost which got pretty hot last autumn. I hope I'm not going to be wrong in that one. So if there's not many weed seeds, that's another big job not needing to. You know, potentially the next job, apart from covering, could be doing a harvest, but let's just wait and see. It's now three weeks since we sowed the carrots here and I'm going to pull back the fleece, row cover, reme, whatever you call it, and we can see, do you see also how the fleece is very simply held down by not many stones? And look at this, three weeks since sowing, now the weather has been cold here, colder than a usual March. We the first week of the hot bit was snow and then it stayed cool and then we had more snow just a week ago and this was again covered not for very long it did melt quite quickly on top but you can see the carrots despite the fact that the compost is not fine and granular in it's quite lumpy and yet look how well the carrots have come up there's a lot of um, misunderstandings about that how you know seeds don't have to have it super smooth and super fine tilthed, rotor tilled, whatever, uh, as long as there is nice soft fibrous material in amongst the larger lamps or even bits of cardboard here and little bits of wood, you know, it's a bit of everything in this compost, uh, which is actually helping to keep it open and, and, and aerated. Um, it will be interesting later to see how well the roots have gone down into it. I also just want to point out one or two weeds, because if this compost had been full of weed seeds, this would be quite a mass of weeds now and it would make it difficult to do a carrot sowing like this. But in fact, there aren't many weeds. The, the weeds that are here are, there's one, the roots of one. Um, there's probably about no more than 10 actually on the whole heap. There's a, a couple. So that that is actually the, the sorry, if I can get hold of it more, the size of weed. That was a carrot by mistake. Ah, there really aren't many weeds here. So what I am doing though is I'm looking for the weeds when they're about this size. So there's no point in letting them get big. I just keep on top of the weeds basically. There's not, it's not going to be a hoeing job here or anything. Just pulling out the odd weed. But there we are. That's all there is to do at the moment, uh, just to keep an eye on them. And in terms of thinning, in a few places they are a little bit thick. And you, what you can do is at this stage you can pull out a few carrot seedlings like that. You know, it all depends what you want. If, if they stay thick like this, there, there will probably be some nice early pullings of very, very small carrots, almost like salad carrots. But I'm not seeing many that I really want to thin here, actually. It's just a few clumps like that, a little bit thick. And there's also always in the back of one's mind whether a slug might come in here and eat a few. But so far, so good. So let's leave it. I'll put the cover back. This is just going to stay with the fleece right on top, keeping all the warmth as close as possible to the carrots. Um, we'll come back in three or four weeks and see how they are. It's uh, a month later, 9th of May today. So we've had some very alternating weather. Outdoor carrots are kind of that high. So this is clearly making a significant difference. The warmth from below the, the remains of the manure heap. Uh, there's, we've got a thermometer in there and it's still reading, actually it's in here, I can show you, um, 35 degrees or so. So there's still warmth coming up from below and you can see how much it's sunk because when we started off it was up here and I've been pulling off the cardboard from the outside just to let, let a bit more light in and we have some carrots 
The question is how much root they have on them. And we also have a few weeds. I've not had to do much weeding, but here's an example of nettle, say. So, so <laughs> the weeds you can see here, uh, I kind of pulled more than 10 weeds out of this um, bed. So it shows how this homemade compost actually is very clean because we, we got it nice and hot last autumn when it was being made. So we have six rows of carrots. Shall we have a look and see, see what's growing? <laughs> yeah, the roots are not, are not fantastic, but they're, they're worthwhile. It's like carrots before the 10th of May, you can't expect a great deal. So these are a little, little roots that are, they're gonna taste good. You can see how at this stage, the, the actual carrot development is not significant. What I'm interested to see also is how, what happens to these little roots when they get down to the, the warm manure. I think at the moment where the temperatures say 30 degrees, um, that's actually not so hot that it would stop um, or would burn a root, for want of a better word. Actually, do you know, I, I was hoping these might have been a bit bigger. We, we, I'm li literally doing this cold. I hadn't, um, well, I just pulled one before today. <laughs> just have a look. And um, so we're doing this very live. I think what I will do, though, is not take up too much more time on film, but I will thin these a bit more carefully now. This is a kind of exploratory, really, to see what's going on. And, well, it's not exactly going to be a meal, but it's going to be a taste of something very nice. So my plan is now to, to do a serious thinning. I mean, there are some nice little baby carrots here. You know, by the time one takes that off, and then um, you've got something nice there to eat. And the flavour of these little ones always is a bit special. So I reckon we'll come back in about three weeks, which is still very early, um, before the outdoor carrots will have been much, and have a look and see what's what. This is after, by the way, a very cold, dull April. So garden-wise, not growth has been below normal. Yeah. See what happens in a few weeks. So now it's the 4th of June and four weeks almost later. There has been growth here. These carrots have disappointed me, I must admit. And it's been interesting to wonder exactly why, because I've done this before and I think it must be the difference is I put not quite so much compost on top of the hotbed. So they just haven't had quite as much growing medium. After the last uh, video in early May, and when I was so disappointed, I, I put on about another inch of nice compost on top, um, including a, a sack of multi-purpose compost, actually, like potting compost that's full of nutrients. Um, but I think it's just the lack of thickness or depth the carrots haven't had before they get down into the rather hot manure. There's, there's nothing wrong with the manure in terms of plants growing into it. Um, there's more the taproot bit of the carrot, which is what we want to eat, um, is not present. So what I've done since then, in fact yesterday, I planted this squash, which is a winter squash, Marina di Chioggia. And the idea is that this will grow and spread out. It can fill this whole space and even drape down over the sides of the bed, over the pallets. And as it grows, we'll just pull out the carrots around it, like I'm doing here. So you can then see the example of what they're like. There's some very small ones and some reasonable ones. We have actually been taking um, quite a few meals from this bed in the meantime, but you can see none of the carrots are getting any length. They're growing and filling out a bit, but not substantially in terms of getting long. And I think they might have just got a bit stunted initially, and that's kind of maybe even killed off the taproot, or not killed off is the wrong word, but stopped it developing anymore. So we've just got these carrots that are getting fatter, but not longer. 
and just to finish off I thought it would be interesting to pull just one or two carrots from the little bed beside the mound here that we made on the same day actually or pretty much late February and this one um, this one is just a bed of, of compost where the carrots were sown straight into the new compost and you can see the difference it is a bit bent <laughs> I think it must have hit a lump of compost there but basically that's developing a proper taproot compared to these ones which were sown earlier and you can see they're fatter there's, a, there's still more to eat on the earlier sowing but these ones are gaining fast now so um, draw the conclusions you will from that I think for me it's been a very interesting experiment and I think that I'm sure that we're going to get a really nice squash here plant which will make lots of food for the winter so we're getting two bites of the cherry if you like. Although the result of this little trial with hotbed and carrots has been not what I would have hoped, I feel we've learnt a lot and hotbeds are fascinating what you can do with them. Have a look at the next video which we're making about using old hotbed ingredients to make what I call a warm bed and we're planting aubergines in it so that's a variation on the subject and I think that one's going to have a more positive result. Do have a look.